Good morning. It is Thursday. <laughs> it was a Tuesday, February 3rd. And I took the day off of work because I'm taking my car in to get um, a remote start installed on my car. I'm so excited. I've like dreamed of having a remote start for years. We're, we're like more than halfway through winter at this point, but I'm so excited to have a remote start. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's when you have like the little key fob thing and you can start your car um, from a distance. Very useful when it's extremely cold out. But anyways, I saw Kayla at Books and Lala uh, do a reading vlog where she had Wordle pick her next read and I was like, I love that idea. It ended up being a not great experience. Well, a mixed bag experience for her because the words that she had didn't have a lot of options in terms of the books that she can read. But I thought I'd give it a try and maybe something fun can come out of it. Again, I have the day off so I'll probably run to the library since my own physical TBR is getting smaller. Look at that stack. Look at that. Barely anything on there. So I will probably utilize the library to some degree to see if I can find something. So let's play some Wordle. Okay, y'all are about to see my uh, traditional Wordle method. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, strategy. That's probably a better word. Anyways, it's early in the morning, so let's just do this. Ooh, ooh, three yellows. All right, all right. Oh, I thought I just got it in two, and I was like, that literally never happens to me. Um, okay, interesting, interesting. So I know it starts with us. I know what it is. No, oh, it's not scary. Oh, I felt so good about that word. Okay, well, at least I know the A and R placement now. Scary also would have been a really good book word too, probably. Is it shark? Do we get to read a shark book? Oh. I'm getting close though. Shard? Interesting. Okay. Let, let's let's see if I can uh, find a book that has the word shard in it. So I'm on my a library's website for um, ebooks and audiobooks, like that side of the website. Let's see what I can find. I typed in the word shard. I'm going to put in available now. I really don't want to do an audiobook, but the single shard book potentially could have been something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not seeing a lot right now. <laughs> Maybe if I didn't click available now, I could see more options at least. Oh, this looks cute. The Bone Shard Daughter. I feel like I've heard people talk about that one, but I don't know if I would like it. Shards of the Earth maybe. Really what I should be doing is going to Goodreads and seeing what I can find there, so let's try that. Okay, I think I'm gonna go with The Bone Shard Daughter. It's a high fantasy book. Let's see if my library has it. There's also a single shard, which also looks really interesting. Okay, my library has both books, so I think I'm gonna check out two books from the library. The library opens at 9, so I might like spend my day out and about running errands a little bit. I like barely leave my house anymore because it's winter and you know global nonsense and so I rarely go to the library anymore so it's actually been like a month since I've been to the library so this might be nice. I also need to pick up a book I put on hold so I'll head to the library, pick up a couple books uh, when it opens that is. Um, I'll take my car in to get that situation figured out, grab some lunch. I need to get my eyebrows done. It'll be a whole day of errands and reading so let's get to it. <music>
after getting the remote start for my car done. I'm so happy to have that. Y'all have no idea. And I was gonna go out and run more errands and like do other things. And I was like, you know what? It's cold and it's gross and it's windy. And I just don't wanna be out in the world any more than I need to today. So I decided to just come home. Also, I'm kind of tired. I, all, I like debated about like running to a coffee shop like Starbucks or something, getting a coffee, but I decided to be um, fiscally responsible. <laughs> Mostly because like I went out to eat and I was like, I don't really need to like spend more money now. But I wanted to. I just need you to know I wanted to. Anyways, um, I thought I would just very quickly talk about the books and give you all an update. So I went to the library and I picked up three books technically, two of which were related to uh, this challenge or daily vlog or whatever. One of which is just a book I had on hold and needed to pick up. Anyways, uh, The Bone Charred da Daughter. This is a really hard... <laughs> title to say. This is a fantasy book and I've heard people talk about this book before and I feel like in general it has pretty positive reviews. This is adult fantasy and I'm only about like five or six chapters in. I didn't put a bookmark in here but I feel like I'm on like chapter five or six. So far it's a book with like multiple perspectives. It takes place in on like islands and there's one character named Lynn who is the emperor's daughter but she had like something traumatic happen to her and now she has memory loss and so the king the emperor has also taken in like a foster son and so Lynn and this foster son are like kind of competing basically to see who will be the person who takes over the throne so Lynn is one perspective there's another perspective which is a smuggler the smuggler is like trying to find out information about some people who have gone missing including their wife while trying to get information in order to get information they end up making a deal that um they'll like smuggle some kid out off of out of the like military because there's some sort of like ritual happening with the kids. I think they call it like a tithing ceremony and it sounds like you're supposed to like give away your kids to the government. I don't know if they like die or just to serve in the military or something like that. While they're trying to smuggle this kid out there are like these earthquakes that keep happening and then all of a sudden like there's this like major what feels like at first to be an earthquake or an after effect uh, but actually it's that the entire island starts to sink and so these two make it away from the island but like all of these people and animals and everything have just died. And this is one of the islands that that emperor uh, oversees. And then there's a third perspective that just came into play, which I'm going to be completely honest, I don't really remember the character's name, uh, but they are like the governor's daughter or something along those lines on one of the other islands. And they their chapter was basically about like how they're in love with somebody, but they don't, that, and they ask that person to marry her. Like she doesn't want to be a governor's wife. And so she says no and she's trying to like reckon with all of that. So yeah, I wasn't sure if this was going to be for me because I don't read a lot of fantasy and I'm still, I feel like wrapping my head around what's exactly happening here. Again, don't read a lot of fantasy so I feel like it takes me longer to like settle into fantasy stories but so far I'm enjoying it and so I'm going to keep going with this one. The other book that I ended up picking up is A Single Shard by Linda Sue Park. This is a kid's book and I don't really know too much about it other than the fact that it's historical fiction and it takes place in 12th century Korea and that's all I got. Um, I do think I will end up reading this one even though I'm like I picked up both of these books because I wasn't sure if I was going to like The Bone Shard Daughter uh, because depending on like where fantasy fall in the spectrum sometimes I can vibe with it sometimes I can't and so I was like okay historical fiction kids book I can basically get behind but this is like a Newbery Award winner all this different things and I'm like I'm enjoying The Bone Charred Daughter and I kind of just want to read both of them and since this one it will be a relatively quick read I feel like it won't be too hard to do. So those are the two books. I don't expect to finish both of them today but I'm gonna try to make as much progress as I possibly can with The Bone Charred Daughter today. My goal is to basically get through those two books over the course of this weekend so by like Sunday night I'll officially be done but we'll see what happens. And then the other book that I picked up has nothing to do with this challenge but I, or video but I thought I would just share it in general is Grant Park. 
by Leonard Pitts Jr. Um, this one I picked up because Dee Dee over at Brown Girl Reading always hosts like um, read along for February for Read So Lit and this is the February pick and I honestly don't know much about it other than it takes place in Chicago. It sounds kind of like a contemporary almost thriller sort of book so I'm very intrigued by this one and so yeah I probably won't be talking about that one in this video but this is just the other book I picked up from the library. So yeah, it's almost two o'clock. I'm gonna like make myself some tea. I have a little bit of work I need to do, not like real life job work, but like YouTube stuff work because Fridays my videos go up and today's Thursday. So yeah, I have a little bit of work I need to do to get like that video for tomorrow ready to go. I need to like do the captions and make sure like all that stuff is like you know set up properly for when it goes live. So yeah I'm probably gonna like work for a little bit before jumping back into a book. So that's my update. lighting. This chair is terrible so uh, let's try to do our best with what we've got. Um, so it's like 8 30 and I've been making pretty good progress. I'm like halfway through this book and it's not bad. I'm gonna admit I don't completely understand the magic system here and like what exactly is going on. There's like animals who are like enchanted. One of the characters meets a cat that can like kind of talk. It's interesting. Um, the cat honestly reminds me of uh, the cat from the Saga series. I mean it talks a little bit more than that cat but it's giving me sort of those vibes. But anyways I'm enjoying the story for the most part. Like it's not like blowing my mind. I'm not like fully in love w with it. Um, I think part of it is because it's like multiple perspectives and so multiple perspective books feel like they take a really long time to like set up. Oh, excuse me, to set up because um, you're constantly switching perspectives and so it takes a while. So now that I'm at the halfway point, I finally feel like things are starting to happen, which is nice. Also, it's funny because I was like thinking about what I was going to say in this update while I was still reading. I don't know if any other booktuber out there does that, but I do that. And I was thinking about the fact that there are like basically like three plot points um, going on here. Like, or three, like, points of views, three characters, or, like, areas that you're following. And I was like, these feel so, like, disparate. I could see, like, two of them and how they kind of relate to each other. But the other one was, like, just really out there. And literally the chapter I just finished, the two storylines seem to have come together. So there's that. So yeah, I'm probably going to read a little bit more tonight, but I have a phone date at 9 p.m. And then after that I'll be going to bed because your girl's old and likes to go to bed early. So um, yeah, just thought I would provide a little bit of an update for where I'm at before bed. Um, I'm going to keep reading this tomorrow and I don't think I have anything planned after work tomorrow. So I'm hoping that I can finish this book tomorrow. I don't know if it'll actually happen, but that's what I'm hoping for. So good night and I will see you all. Well, you'll see me in a second. I will talk to you all in the morning or at some point tomorrow. I don't know when the update will come. <laughs> Hi, it's Friday. It's lunchtime. Um, I'm currently on my lunch break from work. Oh, my hair looks pretty terrible right now, but it's good enough. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's about noon on Friday. And so I thought I would just let you know that I'm a little bit more than halfway through the book. I got to read a little bit more than expected last night. And so I'm currently at page 200 and 57. So I am more than halfway through the book. There are a little over 400 pages in this book. 438 is the end of the acknowledgement. So let's just go with that. So my goal is to finish this book today. I have no plans for after work, which um, is nice in my opinion because it's cold and I don't want to have plans today. So yeah, my goal is to legitimately just like finish work and then get to reading this book. I'm gonna read a little bit now during my lunch break, but I'm probably not gonna get too far along in it. I'm very intrigued to see where this goes. I know that this is a trilogy or the first book in a trilogy. I Yeah, I'm just intrigued to see sort of like where this first book will end because this entire book has just felt like a giant introduction and it feels like no real like significant progress has been made but I've only like just passed the halfway point and we've just hit the point where 
people are starting to be like, we're going to overthrow the emperor and stuff like that. So I'll be interested to see sort of like how the second half goes. But I mean, this is not a terrible book by any means. Like I understand why so many people love it. So yeah, that was just like a quick little update. I'm going to get to reading and eating. I have my lunch here. I like do the thing. I, I don't know if anyone else does this because I work from home, so it doesn't matter. Like I, I will typically like do like a meal plan. Like I will have an idea of what I'm eating for the week in terms of like my lunches but sometimes it doesn't work out perfectly and so then I'm just damaging. So I just threw a bunch of stuff into this container that was in the fridge and I warmed it up and now I'm just gonna eat it. <laughs> That's my update. I'll check in with y'all later. Focus camera, please. Please. We're getting there. Okay, good enough. Um, so I was going to record a clip after I finished like reading whatever chapter I was on because there's stuff I wanted to talk about in regards to this book. And then this chapter just like took a turn. So I'm gonna try to do this and not get overly distracted. Okay, so one thing about this book that I've been thinking about a lot is the fact that because I'm someone who doesn't read a lot of SFF, things like magic systems and world building and stuff like that can sometimes be like confusing for me. And so usually when I'm really into fantasy books, it, they tend to be like sort of low fantasy where it's very close to our world or low sci-fi, same idea, very close to the world that we currently live in and there just might be some elements added onto it. And a lot of times they don't try to figure out the world system or the magic system and things like that. Like it's just not my jam. It's not what I'm going to books for. So with this book, it's really <laughs> wild because basically like animals play a huge, not a huge part, animals play a part in this world. And the idea of these bone shards is like they take animals and they like inscribe things onto bones and then they like I don't I don't get it so I might be completely wrong about this and feel free to tell me I'm wrong in the comments but they like insert the bones into these bone shards into the animals and those like things are basically like commands so like in my head I'm like imagining it almost like robots or computers where you like write commands or code and like there was even like one chapter in here where they were like the closer it is to the brain the higher priority it is and stuff like that so you can write multiple different commands on different bone shards and like rank them accordingly basically and I like don't understand <laughs> like my overly logical real life brain has a really hard time understanding what's going on but I'm just like okay that's about as close as I can get to understanding the magic system here in my head I thought these were all like animals like we know them as animals and like maybe something a little fantastical but then they just introduced like a winged fox and I was like I don't get it I mean I will admit there's lots of different types of birds I don't know so maybe that's like a thing or there is a bird that we know of that's kind of like a fox but also a bird I don't know even like saying that out loud sounds crazy but anyways that was like what I wanted to talk about with this book that's like one of the things I'm having a harder time with is understanding the magic system but there was some interesting stuff that happened in the last section that I read and I'm gonna put up a spoiler tag here like this is a big spoiler so but I need to talk about this now in a section I read last night with Lynn who is the heir to the emperor she encounters her like foster brother basically and he's like freaking out because he found out that the emperor is basically doing experiments on like actual people and now she just found a book that basically says that lynn died when she was three years old so it's like said something along the lines of like lynn it had like birth records and it said lynn and it said like 1522 to 1525 something along those lines and it's now like 1545 so there's this whole thing about like Lynn trying to regain her memories and now it's just like is this actually Lynn is this some sort of like weird Frankenstein situation and the emperor is trying to get her to regain her memories but he's actually like inserting these memories into her like is he trying to do bone shard type things to people it's creepy and dark like I saw people on Goodreads talking about that this was like dark magic related stuff and now I'm starting to understand it 
I mean, the bone shard thing kind of explained it, but now, now I'm starting to understand it. And now I'm intrigued by this book even more than before. So yeah, anyways, I need to get back to work, but just want to provide those quick thoughts. Hi, hello. It's 7.45ish. I am doing a terrible job of making progress on this book. I still have like 100 pages left, so I will finish it tonight, but like we're at the point now where I care more about one storyline more than the rest of it, and the rest of it is a lot of action, so there's a very good chance I'm going to skim a lot of this. I'm also just kind of sleepy. I'll power through for the sake of the video. I'm also sitting in my basement. I'm like, hmm. This may not have been the best idea because it's cold. The reason why I came down here is because my niece was like blasting her music, which was adorable. I support it. Um, she's a preteen. She should be allowed to blast her music on a Friday night. But you know, it messes with my concentration. So I came down to the basement. And uh, it's nice and quiet down here, but it's also very cold. So I might head back upstairs. We'll see. I think I'm going to like head up to make my tea. We'll see if my niece... I still like blasting her music. If not, I might just go back and read upstairs, but yeah, like I don't, I don't imagine myself loving this book, but it's a solid three star read, so 100 pages left. I'll finish it. Hello, it's 9.15 and I finished the book. How exciting. I'm not going to do like a full review here because I'm tired, but this is like probably a three star book for me personally. But if you go on Goodreads, people adore this book, and I can definitely see why. I think the fact that it, this is like very like plot heavy appeals to a lot of people. Uh, it didn't appeal to me personally, like, I didn't feel super connected to any of the characters in here personally, and so like I had a really hard time really motivating myself to pick up this book. Like I, f I feel like if I wasn't reading this book for this video, I probably would have given up part way through. However, I will say if I had given up on this book part way through, I definitely wouldn't have, I would have missed out on some things because there were like things that happened towards the end of the book that I did really enjoy, some really interesting reveals. There were parts of this story that I was able to guess, but there were a decent amount of things that happened in this book that I also did not think would be coming. So, you know, there's that. The multiple POV thing, y'all know, I have mixed feelings about because like, sometimes it works for me, sometimes it doesn't. By the end of the book, I mostly just wanted one perspective because that was the one I was the most interested in. And yeah, I, this was like one of those books where I didn't hate my experience reading it. There are parts of it, again, that I really enjoyed. And I think some of the world building, or not world building, but like the way the magic system works and things like that is really unique in my opinion. I obviously did not understand it all, um, but I like went on Goodreads and looked up some of it and I was like, oh, that's how that works. I still don't really understand like the magical creatures and how that is set up because these people seem to just like stick their hands in these creatures. Like where? Like in my head, <laughs> I kept imagining it being like a stuffed animal where there's just like, like, I don't know if stuffed animals are still like this, but like when I was a young child, uh, which is, you know, 20, 30 years ago at this point, sometimes there would be like a slit in the stuffed animal, um, maybe a zipper or something like that. And you would could like stick your hand in there and pull the stuffing out. I was like imagining things like that. And I'm like, I know that's not really what's supposed to be happening in here. But like the only other thing I could think of is like, they're either doing surgery type of things on these creatures or they're like sticking them in crevices and that just gets gross. And I don't want to think about that too hard. So <laughs> if anyone understands how the constructs work in this book, feel free to hit me up in the comments. But yeah. Would I recommend this book? I would say if you're someone who reads a decent amount of fantasy books and you like plot centric stuff um, and you want like a unique magic system, I definitely think this is worth picking up. I think that there's a decent amount of balance between like family drama and political intrigue sort of stuff with like other storylines and other POVs that this will appeal to a pretty broad audience. Hence why it has such high ratings on Goodreads. I am kind of intrigued by this book. I haven't like fully decided yet if I'll pick up the rest in this series, partially because I'm really bad at reading series. But I do know like I'm not like chomping at the bit for the next book or anything like that like I was with some other like fantasy books I've read in the past. But you know, fantasy is not like my bread and butter. So I feel like 
this one has pretty decent appeal. Um, I also feel like this book feels a little bit like a, a bridge between a young adult fantasy and an adult fantasy. Like it's definitely like categorized as like an adult fantasy book, especially because it gets really dark in there sometimes. But if to me, like the way the characters are developed or the lack of development, you might say, um, it feels some like something I would tend to read with like young adult fantasy. So if young adult fantasy is your jam, this book might be your jam. So yeah, this is a trilogy. Um, the second book is out. I looked up and the third book is coming out this year. So this might have actually been a really good time to pick up this book because if I read like the second book later this year and then I can pick up the third book by the end of the year or something along those lines. And I feel like that rarely happens. And overall I would say like this whole like having Wordle pick my book thing be like this feels like a huge success. Like I know I still have that other book uh, sitting on my shelf from the library but I think I'm gonna wrap up this video here just because I'm tired and there's other things I want to read. But this was kind of fun. Like there's no scenario that I could have imagined outside of this one where I would have picked up this book. Like this is not something I typically pick up but it, it was an enjoyable experience and now I kind of want to just have Wordle pick my books for a while. So if that's a series that you would like to see happen on my channel let me know down in the comments below. Um, but yeah let me know what you thought of this vlog. If you've read this book at all let me know what you've thought of that or feel free to leave any other comments down below that you would like. So yeah, that's all I have for now and thanks for watching.